on the outside of my house, I have this surge protective device. And it's supposed to have a green light down here that says, hey, I'm working correctly. But it doesn't, which means it's either failed or a surge happened and it did its job, which was to absorb the surge, which caused it to fail. Since none of my electronic devices have died, um, I'm going to guess it probably did its job. But it needs to be replaced. So it's tied into my panel here on this surge arrestor, 20 amp. And you see they have a uh, lockout tag here that basically will keep this guy turned on all the time. I used the model number to buy a direct replacement. You could have upgraded to something with a higher capacity. So this is 10 kiloamps. Um, it is 300 volts line to line. So in addition to the replacement part, you're going to need a small selection of hand tools. 5 sixteenths hex to uh, open up your electrical panel. Depending on how your panel is set up, you might need a Phillips or a regular screwdriver instead. You might need a regular screwdriver for um, unscrewing and screwing breakers. You might need a number three flat for uh, larger tie downs or neutral bus bars. What I like to use on these little locking nut washer things is channel lock pliers to get a nice easy good grip around them. If you need to shorten up any wires, you might need a wire cutter and stripper. These guys are 10 gauge, stranded. If there's any wire nuts involved, you might want to have some electrical tape and scissors to cut it to put the wire nuts back on and tighten them down and use the tape to hold the wire nuts in place. So in my case, I'm going to turn off the surge arrestor, um, which is on this little lockout to prevent it from being turned off in normal operation. So you have to unscrew the grub screw and remove this. Now, since you're watching this on the internet, you should be turning off the main disconnect, which will unpower everything down here, although there's still going to be electrically charge stuff up there. Um, but if you're careful, you can get away with just disconnecting the thing you're working on. Now this guy's a bit messy because we have an energy monitor in here. So we'll have to work around that. But you can see this guy comes in and then the two black wires go up to these two wire nuts which connect the energy monitor and the surge arrestor to this 20 amp um, circuit breaker. So we're going to have to take these guys off and also this surge arrestor has a neutral that goes up to the neutral bar so we'll have to take that off. All right, when putting the new one in, you want to have this rubber gasket here against the bottom there. Since we're working with a live box, we want to make sure these wires are coming out of the box and not up into something that's live while we're working. Remember to put this thing on the wires before you attach the wires to anything. You want to tighten that thing enough to compress the rubber washer, but not enough to break the plastic threads. Alright, so once you put all the wires back where they originally came from, from the original unit, you want to turn it on. Make sure you have green light that says, hey, I'm working. 
So this guy is dead, at least the green light is turned off. I don't know if it has just died, or if it gave its life protecting my house from a surge. I'm going to uh, open it up and take a look at what's inside. So it looks like they have a big plastic bit here that glues down onto this plastic here. So I'm just going to cut all the way around the top side there. Where are your safety goggles, y'all? All right, there we go. So what's inside this surge arrestor is quite simple. There's two of these, and that's what does all the work. They're MOVs, um, thermally protected MOVs, which is a metal oxide varistor. And essentially, if you look at how they're wired up, you have the neutral line going to the center and your two hots going to either side here. So each of these MOVs is read at 150 volts AC. And um, what they're doing here basically is saying, hey, we have the neutral and we have 300 volts across these two hots. And so a variable resistor will not provide resistance if the voltage is below this thing. And as the voltage goes above that thing, um, it'll start resisting or dissipating current into heat. And um, so basically, if you get a surge of energy on your power line, um, your voltage will spike up, and when it goes above 300 volts on your 240 volt system, or above 150 volts on either side on the, on the 120 lines, um, these guys will either, one or both, will start resisting and um, trying to clamp that voltage to a safe level for everything else in your house. Now because these guys are in series for a 240 volt line, you might notice that you can use this on a 120 volt system. So the indicator works on 120 volts, um, and these guys each are 150 each. So if you want to put them in parallel to work on a 120 volt system, the instructions tell you how to do this. You hook the white up to your neutral, and you hook both blacks up to the same line. And so at that point, you have twice as much protection because you have two of these MOVs across that 120 volt line. Now, at some point, if the surge is too much, they will fail. Um, and so these guys have built-in micro switches inside. So these two little solder joints on the top are micro switches that say, are these things still working or not? Um, and you can see this circuit board on the top. The circuit board on the top is just an indicator. It doesn't do anything with protection. So all the protection is inside the white boxes. Um, but the indicator basically has power coming in from the neutral and one of the hot sides. So it's getting, you know, 120 volts AC. It's rectifying it, half rectifying it through a diode. It probably has, I guess it's just carrying on these resistors here in the diode. Um, and then it has a light or an LED that'll light up here. If one of the micro switches triggers, then the light turns off. Now, it's possible that we had a surge that took out one of these, but not the other. So I'm going to test the two micro switches just to see, hey, are, are one, is one of them still okay, quote unquote. So when I test the connections here, both micro switches are closed or conducting. Um, and how this indicator board is set up, if a micro switch is closed, it shorts the light. And so both of these guys are closed and shorting the light. So it might be that one of them is closed and it's shorting both sides. And I'm reading through both sides through one switch. So to test them independently, I need to desolder these guys from each other. Double check the spec sheet on these guys, and these are the ones that do not have a visual indicator here. But the spec sheet says these are normally open micro switches, and both of these micro switches are open right now. So it's possible these two guys are still good, and the problem is with the indicator light or the indicator circuit. going to remove the indication circuit from the protection part. OK, 
Okay, let's see if this guy's getting 120 volts AC. And because right now we do not have. Yeah, so through those resistors we're getting 66 volts AC, which is pretty reasonable given this circuit. So it's getting power, and that light is not on. So my indicator is bad, which may indicate that the MOVs are just fine, or maybe they're bad too. So I plug this guy into 120 volts AC. After these pretty large resistors, I measured 64 volts AC at this end of the things. Um, that goes through a diode, which will make it DC. The circuit board says 0 to 94 volts, um, DS1 with an LED symbol here. So this indicator is supposed to work up to 94 volts, and it looks like only 60-some were coming in. So it should be lighting up because these two connections are open because they're unsoldered from the MOVs, but it's not lighting up. So I believe this guy is bad. Um, so it might be that that's the only thing that was bad, in which case replacing this wasn't really strictly necessary. However, if your indicator isn't working, it needs to be replaced. Um, so it's possible these two guys are perfectly fine. I'd feel more comfortable if they had the visual indicator so I could check the visual indicator in addition to the micro switches. The only way to know for sure, of course, is to open them up. Um, and or destructively test them with putting, you know, for example, 240 volts across one of them. Um, so I'm not going to destructively test them or open them up. I probably will just not use them for anything. Um, they are, you know, if you try to buy these things, they're about 30 bucks each to buy them. Um, obviously in quantities you can get them cheaper than that. So it's possible I could make this into a 120 volt surge suppressor that you plug into something. Um, However, it's no guarantee that they're still good. Just because the micro switches are open is a good indication, but it's not a guarantee.